After a ton of waiting and anticipation, Nintendo has finally released the successor to the immensely popular Nintendo Switch, the aptly named Switch 2. The new platform shares the same flexibility of use as its predecessor, so the majority of the upgrades have happened inside the box. The Switch 2 might not be able to hold its ground against the PS5 or Xbox Series X, but it's a rather interesting piece of hardware that has some serious chops considering its price point and hybrid form factor. And all of that got us thinking, how much would it exactly cost to build a PC that's as powerful as Nintendo's machine while using fresh, off-the-shelf parts? So with this feature, we're going to try to do exactly that as we pick parts and build something that resembles Nintendo Switch 2 in terms of performance in the docked mode. Now note, prices are accurate as of the time of writing. GPU The Switch 2 uses a custom chip sourced from NVIDIA, which is based on the Ampere architecture that we saw in the RTX 3000 series. Nintendo made a smart choice by going with the more mature and newer architecture, which not only helps in terms of raw compute performance, but also supports newer features like DLSS 3.0 and hardware accelerated ray tracing, helping optimize performance across the board. The docked mode is already showing some impressive results, and hardware specific optimizations will undoubtedly help in sustaining that as time goes on. For the sake of keeping the same architecture and same power budget, we're going to be choosing an RTX 3050 for the GPU. Packed with 6GB of memory, the RTX 3050 should be able to serve all of our gaming needs at a respectable resolution and frame rate. And all of it comes at a rather measly price of $180 on Amazon, making it a great starting point for our build. CPU One of the biggest leaps in this console generation is in terms of CPU power and the Nintendo Switch 2 is no different in that regard. The custom chip comes packed with 8 ARM78 CPU cores that run at a higher frequency in docked mode, and that is double of what the original Switch featured. As such, we can expect significant improvements in the single core and multi-core performance end of things. For our build, the Intel Core i3-12100F serves as a good approximation of what the Nintendo Switch 2 has in terms of CPU compute, and it should also complement the RTX 3050 really nicely, without one overpowering the other. It shares the same 8-thread spec sheet of our comparison console, but larger cache sizes and higher single-core speeds will obviously make it faster in terms of the raw grunt of the system. It's obviously a solid choice for the purpose, and at a price point of around $74 on a retail site like Newegg, it's really a no-brainer. Motherboard For our motherboard, we just need something that will be able to hold all of our components without having to bother with any cumbersome BIOS upgrades. We will need a board with LGA 1700 socket support, a PCIe 4.0 slot for storage, and fitting that build perfectly is the MSI Pro H610MG motherboard. It retails for around $90 on Amazon. Memory The Nintendo Switch 2 brings forth plenty of new upgrades to the memory end of things, providing an upgrade from just 4GB of memory to a full fat 12GB. Unlike a traditional PC, the RAM in a console is dynamically shared between CPU and GPU, which makes the system a lot more flexible with such a meager memory budget. That luxury doesn't extend to our build, however, and we will need to supply enough memory to the system so that it can render that huge open world that current-gen games are flaunting. We'll be going with the crucial 16GB DDR4 kit, two sticks of 8GB, each which run at 3200 MHz, which further optimizes the system and allows other components like the CPU or the GPU to reach its full potential. Also, running the kit in dual channel is advantageous from a speed perspective, but you could also go with a single 16GB kit as that will unlock future upgrade paths. You can get it for $70 on Amazon. Storage Nintendo Switch comes with a UFS 3.1 storage system with 256GB of memory right out of the box. And while it wouldn't match up to the snappy SSD speeds of the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, it's still a considerable improvement over what came before. To match that spec sheet, we'll be going with the Western Digital SN580 SSD drive, which features great read and write speeds and can be purchased for around $60 on Amazon. 
in a more realistic scenario, you should go for a higher capacity drive since current gen games can easily soak up 100 gigabytes. But for keeping this build accurate and cheap, we're gonna go with the 250 gigabyte variant. Case. We will also be needing a competent case to house all of our components. And the Montec Air 100 is something that will check all of the required boxes without breaking the bank. It's sleek, moderately stylish, and best of all, it comes with four RGB fans that should help in cooling the system and prevent any possibility of thermal throttling. You can purchase it for around 70 bucks on Amazon. Power Supply A power supply is one of the most important parts of a gaming system, and one should never cheap out on this component. It's always advisable to go with a reputed brand with 80 plus power rating, and satisfying these requirements has to be the EVGA 450W 80 plus bronze power supply. It's going for around $55 on EVGA's official site, and you can expect similar prices across different platforms. Going with a 450W PSU isn't recommended in most cases, but since the RTX 3050 6GB variant doesn't require any external power draw, we should be able to supply enough power to the rig. Controller As for the controller, we'll be choosing the Xbox Wireless Controller. It's affordable, ergonomic, and offers great compatibility. And you can find it going for around $75 on Amazon. It's a wireless controller, but it runs on AA batteries, so you could always spring up the extra cash or go for another option if you dislike replacing batteries every couple of months. HDMI cable. For the HDMI cable, we're gonna go with the Anchor Certified High Speed Cable. It supports 4K at 120fps, but don't expect many games to be running at that resolution and frame rate combo. It can be found retailing for around eight bucks on Amazon. Keyboard and mouse. We would also be needing a keyboard and mouse combo to operate the system. And the Logitech MK120 wired keyboard and mouse combo should do the trick at a cheap price. It's not a fancy piece of gear, but it gets the job done and can be comfortably used for casual gaming. And at a price point of just $15 on Amazon, we aren't really complaining. Operating system. The final piece of the puzzle is an operating system. So we'll have to factor in the cost of a Windows 11 home license as well. It comes for around $139 on the official site and will be required to ensure maximum compatibility for games since hassle-free gaming on Linux is still a foreign reality. Conclusion Adding up the prices of all of these equipments, well, the total cost of the rig comes for around $836, and that is obviously a lot higher than the retail cost of the Nintendo Switch 2, which is currently priced at $450. Our proposed PC build will obviously perform slightly better than the Switch 2, but the compromise comes in the lack of mobility and unavailability of exclusives like Mario or Zelda on the PC. Still, it's going to be great witnessing how this gap narrows down in the near future and how things evolve over time, so stay tuned until then. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.